Well, shalom everybody. Um, I'm here to do a little sharing today and uh, some things that have been on my heart and things that I've had to make some time for. And always Yahuwah is showing me something and I'm working on it, but this finally has culminated into it's going to be a video now. Um, this is called Restore the Name of Mashiach, the Messiah. And plus, just get rid of this message here. Plus, um, it's called Code Searcher. Would you be willing to search my name? My full name is. So um, last time I did a video, I started with prayer and uh, somebody brought up uh, uh, some complaints about it and said it wasn't scriptural. I believed it was, but I don't want anybody to uh, not be able to hear the message because I prayed at the beginning of the message. So I prayed before I started the video and um seems like they thought I was trying to get gather some glory or something for myself. Um, that's not why I would pray over this message. Um, nevertheless, I have prayed. And um, I'm going to be reading scripture, which is like praying again. So hopefully if uh, if I inerrantly, if I accidentally, if I ignorantly sin, somebody can forgive my sin so they can hear the message. I believe that these sort of things are um, probably subconsciously brought on by the enemy because he doesn't want that person to hear what the message is. Um, or others can be also distracted. But anyway, we're just going to move right along. Uh, the photo above, now this, uh, let me just say, is a note on my Facebook uh, notes, in, on my Facebook page. So you can um, access it from there for all my Facebook friends who uh, will be making that available shortly. It's only been available to Jonathan so far um, because I wanted his approval on it. I do seek his approval before I share something because he is my spiritual heading, um, my covering. And um, also uh, somebody Saturday night had something to say about Jonathan wearing a cap and me not having a covering on. Well, my covering is my hair. This is scriptural. This is my covering. Um, if you need a covering on a woman's head, uh, other than this, go look in the, in the Muslim, uh, um, religion. I think you'll find your coverings there. Um, but as far as Yahuwah's word, it doesn't say that women must wear a covering. And then Paul says that the covering is their hair. Okay. Um, so that's another distractor. Let's move on. The photo above is from the movie The Raiders of the Lost Ark, this one here on the top. And um, this picture here is also from Raiders of the Lost Ark. I'm just going to share a little, little interesting thing to you guys. In this movie, the German man, not a righteous person, has in greed grabbed a burning hot sanctified object with information into the palm of his hand. He thinks that he has all the information. Um, however, he has only burned part of the information onto his hand. The other side had other information. Since the medallion stayed in the possession of the one who was obviously the chosen one to receive it and hold on to it, he was the one who had access to the information on both sides. I hope you remember the movie. If you do not or have not seen it because it was done many years ago, please get it and watch it. If you watch movies... Um, this is a great one. It's very interesting, and it shares some interesting perspectives about the search of people for the Kadosh things that belong to Yahuwah. The piece was, put, was to be put upon a staff or upon a pole, and it was supposed to be defined on, on the piece how long to make the staff. Because the pagan man only had one side of the information branded into his hand, he did not have the right information, and so the German Nazis were digging in the wrong area. Harrison Ford, as Indiana Jones, did figure out where to look, and as the sun shone through the headpiece of the staff, it showed Indiana Jones where to dig. Indiana Jones was the one who knew where to look for the lost Ark of Yahuwah. This is the way the movie went. Of course, the Germans did, um, did a might-makes-right move on him and stole the Ark because of their army and stuff. They then proceeded to show to look into the ark, but Indiana Jones somehow got it into his mind or spirit to close his eyes and to keep them closed, that there was something that would be in the ark that they should not be seeing. The Germans and their makeshift high priest did not pass the muster either. They melted by the display of Yahuwah's Ruach, his sanctified spirit. 
Pardon me, I'm going to open this window a little bit. It's just a little warm in here. So here in this photo, you see Indiana Jones, played by Harrison Ford, and he's got his staff here, and then this object that has light kind of winging off both sides, um, that is the headpiece of this Egyptian deity in the movie. And it shows, the light shows through the headpiece and then shines to where the um, Ark of the Covenant was buried within the movie. This shows the backside perspective with the sun coming through. And, um, and then here shows where it, towards the, right at the end of the movie, where the high priest character, the guy here who had the image burned into his hand, and this would be like a Nazi general or something. Um, and they're standing up here. Here's the Ark of the Covenant, or their, their model of the Ark of the Covenant. And they have opened the lid here to look into the Kadosh things of Yahuwah, into his Ark of the Covenant. And they would probably expect anything that was, um, was mentioned in the scriptures to be in the Ark of the Covenant. The prop piece um, is called the headpiece of the staff of this particular Egyptian deity. I just, just because of the trollers, I decided not to say his name because um, we're called in the scriptures not to say a deity's name. There's no reason to say his name. I can just say an Egyptian deity. You can look it up if you want further information. Um, I just don't want people to get distracted and blow it for everybody else. In the movie, Indiana Jones goes to someone who can translate what is on the headpiece. He tells him what the script writers have told him to say. Of course, he's going to read his line. I have seen grown people argue about what the script says it said on online. Um, people love the movie a lot, and they argue about what it actually says or what it meant. The interesting thing is that the prop maker who had this piece made did not put the name of the Egyptian deity on it. Actually, the Hebrew Elohim's name is on it, and the message is translatable. I translated it on uh, one time, and this is what it says. By the way, here is our Elohim's name right here. This is the one in the Hebrew Scriptures in um, the Tanakh, the, the what is known as the Old Testament. Um, they had to even they had to really hide it in the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament. But here is his name, yod He wah He yahuwah So this didn't belong to that Egyptian deity at all. This looks like a menorah up here. There's writing on both sides. And this one is actually side one, and it says, Under yearning, the enemy foe adversary, one who raises rises against was burned with a sign a brand a mark but he will have to turn back return to do it again once more is that not amazing i think that is so amazing here in the video the man was burned on one on one side of or on his hand in his palm he had burned right you know right in here he had this image burned and it said again under yearning, the enemy, foe, adversary, one who rises against, was burned with a sign, a brand, a mark. But he will have to turn back, return, to do it again once more. Just amazing. Here's the side that's a little bit brighter, easier to see. Here's Yahuwah's name again. That's our beloved Elohim, our mighty one, our strong one. And this is what that side says. Let's put it right here so you can see a little bit of it. And connect his longing with terror. He shall be one shattered, dismayed. He attempts to cover over his unfaithful, treacherous behavior to attempt to lay hold of and seize banned treasures in order to lift his temporal self upward. But it is separated out to be withheld from ordinary use. The ark has been consecrated and made kadosh to Yahuwah. But you attempt to put yourselves or each other into the state of dedication or cultic purity. Nevertheless, it is a set-apart thing, a thing to which Kadoshness adheres, and therefore it must thus be treated with care. Look here for revelation. A portion has been cut off of the pole, 
because the pole was cut off, separated, without regard for the length of the poles that carry the ark, making them full of empty talk, bragging diviners. Yahuwah and his revelation of the offense. Amazing. Ah, just gives me goosebumps. I just feel that Yahuwah had that written on that piece. Ah. Uh, this is a favorite movie of mine. Interesting side note, the prop maker of Cecil B. DeMille's Ten Commandments also put Yahuwah's name on the Ten Commandment tablets. Though the script writers wrote Gimel Dalit or God, um, Yahuwah had the prop maker put his name on it. Yahuwah used these prop makers to preserve his name. I worked in television production for 30 years when I retired due to a back injury. Um, I ended up in front of the camera proclaiming his name. So here I am in front of the camera and I am proclaiming his name to the world. I thought that my next video was going to be on the name of the Messiah, but sometimes and often it seems like Yahuwah puts together something else for me to do, so I'm just going to do what he gives me. The following item items is what I believe I'm, I'm supposed to share on the name of HaMashiach, the Messiah. His father's name is in him. Yahushua. Also, the Jews removed the name of Yahuwah from being able to be spoken. This is back at the time of the Messiah. Before the Brit Hadashah was written, the New Testament or the, the um, re renewed covenant. This means renewed and this means covenant. Please see Mysteries of Messiah in the name of Yahuwah, part one of nine, Yahuwah, Yahushua. Um, and this is by Messenger of the Name and the remaining nine parts, we need to let those who have been anointed teach or share a certain truth of Yahuwah to share it um, because they are anointed to do it. It's something Yahuwah has put on their heart. They've worked through it. They have put it all together. And um, sometimes a person will say, well, just give me the scriptures and show me something. And I would bring up the subject of the lunar Shabbat. Um, people that don't want to search it, um, and they don't want to see in any videos. They'll say, oh, well, that's man-made. That's a video, blah, blah, blah. But, but we watch videos in this, in this century, this, um, generation. We watch a lot of videos. Um, and we take in information and the spirit of truth, the Ruach HaKodesh of truth, um, who leads us into all truth. He gives us the ability to discern. Um, and so when somebody has done a, a tremendous amount of work, Yahuwah um, allows them the opportunity to put it on online so that they that people can come and see the videos like those of you who are here seeing this one and like those of you who see code searcher videos um, he draws you to see those videos and then you can uh, what we say is chew the meat and spit out the bones you can stay with the truth you can disregard whatever may not be perfect because we are human vessels doing our best to to um, restore the things of Yahuwah and put out there what he wants us to put out there so you can regard it. Um, and so this man, Messenger the Name, um, he does an amazing job with um, the restoration of the name of Yahuwah, Hashem Restored. And um, he now has this video on the name of the Messiah, Mysteries of the Messiah, Mysteries of Messiah in the name of Yahuwah. And this, this link here is part one of nine. So if you're watching on YouTube as opposed to my, um, Facebook note page, uh, you can, you can just, um, look up this name because this link won't work, but I may put it in the description for you. Um, otherwise, um, just, just, Look, put that name in the search for on YouTube and, and find it. Um, the other video I'd really like to see you guys watch is They Have Despised My Name by Followers of Yah. It's an amazing video. There was a time when I watched it about one once a month. It's getting a little cool now. Um, we also have goats getting ready to go into labor, and we have a cat that's getting ready to go into labor for the first time. So um, it's going to be busy, a busy month for us, besides the things that Yahuwah has um, in store for us this month. Um, 
I also believe I am supposed to share with you the note of Rabbi Kaduri. I believe we should give great credibility to the name that was given to him, and that just came to my spirit today in a, in a strong way. He had a modern-day visit of our Mashiach, Messiah, to this generation. To the man appointed to receive it, was it was given to him. There was a man appointed to receive it. Now, this particular man... He had a hundred thousand people, I understand from the reports, at his funeral in Jerusalem. And I think he was over a hundred years old or, or right at it. Um, I didn't look up that fact before I was writing here, but he was, he was a very old man and very beloved and he was a teacher of the word. Shortly before his death, Rabbi Kaduri said the Mashiach met him and that he was to leave the name of the Mashiach, which was to be read one year after his death. He died on January 28, 2006. The note was read one year later. This has caused a great stirring and a great awakening about the Mashiach among the students and followers of Rabbi Kaduri, who are now searching out and studying about the Messiah. This is a great bit about what the ministry of Zev Porat is about over in Israel. He is teaching them, and they come to him secretly, searching for the truth. In Rabbi Kaduri's note, the name of the Mashiach, the Messiah, was encoded. This is a, a picture of his note. And by the way, um, I frequently send out um, invitations for, for those who are seeking truth to send me a Facebook message if you're on Facebook. And um, this is what my icon looks like right now. It's the Rabbi Kaduri note. Every once in a while I change it, but I really feel um, strong about this note right now. So um, I have it up on my Facebook page. These, um, these letters here that have been circled by somebody else's red pen, um, they are the letters of the Messiah's name. Yod, He, Wa, Sheen, Wa, Ain, and that would be Yehushua with two Wa's. Rabbi Kaduri wrote this encoded message down, and it was to be sealed until one year after his death and then read and made public. This is a reprint of a cover story that first appeared in the April 2007 issue of Israel Today magazine. A few months before he died, one of the nation's most prominent rabbis, Yitzhak Kaduri, supposedly wrote the name of the Messiah on a small note, which he requested would re uh, would remain unsealed until now. When the note was sealed, it was it revealed that Yehushua is the name of the Mashiach or the Messiah. The rabbi and Kabbalist described the Messiah using six words and hinting that the initial letters form the name of the Messiah. The secret note said, concerning the letters, concerning the letter abbreviation of the Messiah's name, and that part of the note is right here. He will lift the people and prove that his word and his instructions are valid. That's the English translation of the message that he encoded Yehushua, our Messiah's name in. This I have signed in the month of mercy, Yitzhak Kaduri. The Hebrew sentence translated above inside the asterisk with the hidden name of the Mashiach, or Messiah, reads, I'm going to do my best here. I am not a Hebrew specialist. I'm just like a one-year-old, so anybody who speaks Hebrew better than me, I'm sorry, this is... This is the level of um, understanding and operation I have right now. Yarim Ha'am Wayokiak Shed Baro Watoroto Watorato Om Dim. And here it is this way we read right to left in Hebrew. Yarim Hayam Wayokiak. And then there's Watoroto. Omdim. And that's this part right here. Each first letter was circled with a, a red circle, so you can find the letters.
Concerning the letter abbreviation of the Messiah's name, the first line does not show the code, but informs the reader the next part will reveal his name. And again it said, He will lift the people and prove that his word and instructions are valid. This word, instructions, is Torah. Um, the word here, we have in English here. And this word... Uh, let me find it. Toroto, right here. Um, let me see how it says. Wa Toroto. So that wa is like a is like and the word and for us. Wa Toroto. Wa Toroto. There we go. A little better about that. Okay. So Torah is who is instruction, and Torot is the plural of that word, is what I'm showing there. So. What Yahuwah wanted us to know with his son's name encoded was he will lift the people and prove that his word and instructions are valid. The initials of these six words spell the name of our Mashiach, Yahushua. There is the modern Hebrew, or also known as the Chaldean flame letters, Yahushua which is to say, Yehushua, that is called a transliteration, and we do read the transliteration from left to right. And since I have you here as a captive audience, I will tell you, because many people ask me on my on my Facebook post, how come you have certain letters capital and certain letters small? I only do that with Hebrew letters, and I only do it so I remember how the word is spelled in the Hebrew. So that represents a yod, that represents a hay, that represents a wa, that represents a sheen, that represents a wa, and that with apostrophe represents an ayin. For me, that just tells me how to spell it like this, and I spell it in Paleo-Hebrew, um, which is what I'm learning from Eric Bissell. I would not be able to have done what I did with the Indiana Jones prop, the headpiece of the staff of the Egyptian deity, which is really the headpiece of the staff of Yahuwah, if I hadn't learned from Eric Bissell what I've learned from him, because that was Paleo-Hebrew that I was uh, translating. But this is a transliteration. It tells you how to pronounce a word, Yahushua. Anybody can pretty much look at that and, and work it out, Yahushua. In ancient Hebrew, there was no V sound. There was a W sound. And um, in the modern Hebrew, they use a V for this letter. And there's another letter they use a V sound for as well, and that's a bet. In ancient Hebrew, there was no V sound. So it was either a bet, a B sound, or it was a wa, a W sound. Okay, so we have here Yahushua. He bears the first three letters of his father and our father's name, Yahu. Transliterated here, Yahu. It is not Yeshua in that note. That name... Yeshua or Yeshua was written down in our renewed covenant, um, like in the Aramaic. After the house of Yehuda decided to remove Yahuwah's name from the spoken language after their Babylonian captivity. It is not Jesus. There is no J in the Hebrew language. It is not Yeshua equals Jesus. It is Yahushua. It has Yahuwah's name in it. Yahushua. So, Jesus is a made-up name thanks to Constantine and the Council of Nicaea. They were trying to um, culminate deities into one so that they could take different pagan cultures and Christian. They cut the Christian off from the Hebrew, the Jewish. Um, and the reason I say the Jewish is because uh, the Gentiles... Those lost sheep of Israel, they were learning the ways of Yahuwah from the house of Yehuda. Yehuda means praise, and it also means the door to Yahuwah. Um, they were learning how to be a Hebrew, a person who was crossed over from the ways of the world into Yahuwah's ways. And then Constantine put an ax to that. I have, a, I have on Facebook, I have a picture of Constantine's creed which I didn't include here, but I'll try to work it in in the future. And if you're on Facebook, you've probably seen it. But I, I copy pictures like that so I can use them in ministry. Um, as Christians, those of us who grew up as Christians in churches, which is most of us, um, we weren't taught to seek out the things of 
Constantine. Um, I mean, to seek out the things of rather the the beginnings of Christianity, which include um, Constantine separating the people of Yahuwah from the house of Yehuda, so that we did not learn. And excuse me one moment, I seem to have a, ma a mouse behind me. Why are you here? Thank you, you're making noise with your bag. Put your bag away if you're staying in the room. Sorry, that was my youngest. We have a wing, and she's part of the wing here. Okay. Um, so Jesus, a made-up name, thanks to Constantine and the Council of Nicaea. Again, the name on this note is Yahushua. If anybody tells you it means it says Yeshua, it does not say Yeshua. If anybody tells you it's Jesus, it does not say Jesus. It doesn't mean Jesus. It means Yahushua. I believe that we need to greatly regard the exact name that was given to Kaduri. He had a hundred thousand people at his funeral. This was a message to the world. This was a man appointed to receive the message. Yeshua does not, it does mean salvation in Hebrew. It is a word and it does mean salvation, but it does not tell us who salvation comes from. It does not tell us what deity or mighty one salvation comes from. So Yahushua does tell us who we are to cry out to. We are to cry out to Yahu, Yahushua. Psalm 27 1 says, Yahua Ari wa Yeshui. Yahuwah is my light and my salvation. Yashayahu, salvation of Yahuwah, or what we know as the book of Isaiah, in chapter 12, verse 2, says El, and it says, I'm pulling out the names of the names in the word, in the um, verses here. El, Yeshuati, Yahuwah, Liyashua, and verse 3 reads, Heishua. In the English, um, we're just going to read the, the whole chapter. It's just verse six, for, uh, chapter, sorry, six verses. And in that day, you shall say, I thank you, Yahuwah, though you were enraged with me, your displeasure has turned back and you have comforted me. See, El is my deliverance. I trust and am not afraid for Yah, Yahuwah, is my strength and my song, and he has become my deliverance. And you shall draw water with joy from the fountains of deliverance. So that was those three situations here. Yashuati um, is my deliverance. Li Yeshua has become my deliverance. And He Shua of deliverance. So those are just prefixes here that change like verse tenses, uh, verb tenses and things like that. Um, here, it's a good opportunity, since you are a captive audience, uh, to say, this is one thing I've seen on Facebook a lot. I do a lot of ministry on Facebook, just the things that Yahuwah shows me and um, brings up for me to, to regard. Try to pop out some of these Facebook things here. Boy, just have to ignore some of them, I guess. Um, I see on Facebook a lot, people will have beautiful pictures, and I wonder if I can increase this, so I can't. Um, people will have beautiful pictures, and they will, they will say, for Yah said this or that. Um, they will quote a verse, and it'll, it'll have Yah in the beautiful picture. It would be like if I said here, Yah is my strength and my deliverance, and I had here... Um, whatever it was, I forget what it was here. So short my attention span is, okay, if I said, for Yah is my strength and my song, and I said Isaiah 12 verse two here, but it really said Yah Yahuwah, um, I really expect to see Yah Yahuwah in here because we are required to faithfully represent Yahuwah's name and proclaim it and um, to not add to or take away from his word. When it says Yah, Yahuwah, I don't think it happens that often. I looked up on Wikipedia how many times Yah shows up in his word. Yahuwah was taken out of King Jimmy, King James Version, 6,823 times, I believe it is. It's over 6,820 times. And it was replaced with Lord. 
That is an identity thief. Yahuwah's name needs to be restored, and so thankfully there are many restorations. It's one of the things Yahuwah is very seems to be very concerned about restoring is his name to us. Why is because there's power in the name. So to cut off Yahuwah's name to just Yod Hey, just Yah, um, when Yahuwah doesn't cut off power, there's something going on there. There's something a little stinky and fishy about that. To me, I think so. So I looked up in Wiki, and Yah is in the word 50 times. 42 is in the phrase, Hallelujah. Hallelujah is a phrase. It's not one word. Um, it means, let us praise Yah. And then a lot of times, let's see, I've seen one say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, et shem, Yahuwah, which means, let us praise Yah, let us praise the name Yahuwah. 42 out of 50 times, it's in the phrase, hallelujah. That means there's only eight other times that it's not in the phrase, Yahuwah. Here's one of them. That means there's seven other defined. Okay, so if you see, if you're on Facebook and you see these pictures and they say, Yah does this and Yah said that and Yah will do this, go over and check out that scripture. If it says Yahuwah 6,820 6, times, 6,823 times it's going to be Yahuwah versus 42 times it's going to be Hallelujah and one time right here and then there's seven other times. There's great odds it is not going to be Yah does this or Yah said that. It's going to be Yahuwah. So I believe that that is part of the enemy's plan to say, okay, well now you're saying Yahuwah, let's, let's cut his name down to Yah and we're going to spread Yah down because we don't want you to have those extra two letters. We don't want you to have the wa and the hey at the end. I don't know, something fishy's going on. We need to examine and suspect our enemy. We cannot underestimate him. Okay, so we've read through these six verses here in, in chapter 12. So Code Searcher, we've now finished um, what is the name of Yahushua. We're going to go into what was mainly put on my heart to work on today. Because I've seen a couple places, and he has too, where people are asking, um, this is what it sounds like. Would would you be willing to search my name? I would be greatly honored. I would absolutely love it. Please, just whenever you have time, my full name is, and they'll give it their full name. Okay, here's my response. I've taken it to my head, my covering, and he has given me approval to share this with you. So now it's our response. Often people will contact Code Searcher and ask them, Ask him to ser search for their names. Often, curiously, they mention that they will be greatly honored and mention when Code Searcher has the time. The easiest part of this to address, that there's never time. We're consumed, so consumed, with things Yahuwah seems to be leading us to pursuing in studying. Um, we never complete it. That's why when we get a we get a request to search for... I don't know, um, somebody, let's say, who's, who's, uh, when we get asked to search for, I'm going to give Madonna, I have somebody else in mind, but I don't want to embarrass him, so I'm just going to say, if somebody asks us to search for Madonna, that is such a waste of our time. Um, Yahuwah has us searching far more important things to you guys all collectively, and that's where we need to spend our time. Time seems to be speeding up on us, and daily the events and the leadings we are getting, things just never seem to be, there never seems to be an, uh, any time left over. It seems Yahuwah always has something he wants us to be searching, uh, something we need to be researching and doing. With compulsion, we are neck deep into all the things he puts on our hearts and minds to be searching out. And lots of times Jonathan's doing one thing and I'm doing another, and... Um, and many times a day we are mixing or, hey, look at this. See what I saw. Let's look it up. To be fully clear and precise. Let me see if I didn't miss anything. I want to make sure I didn't. Okay. But to be fully clear and precise and to explain in a deep way, I have to give you a deep, clear explanation. So we are going to look deeply at why this is not necessarily something you are prepared to look for. And we're not prepared to look for it either. This will also address why people should not go to the English cupcakeinator Ouija, Ouija board type strange fire code machine that's all English, some English translation and even other different translations. 
um, and pop in their name and other things they are trying to draw out about themselves. I pray that sharing wisdom about searching oneself in the codes, whether Code Searcher were to do it or one does it themselves through either Hebrew codes or the English Ouija board, cupcake and nader, fortune telling machine, strange fire that people have been playing with because somebody on YouTube has been suggesting they do so and doing it himself. Yahuwah's word, which is Hebrew, is his. It belongs to him. It belongs to him. And he will not be mocked. It is Yahuwah's word that Code Searcher is examining. He has to do have to does sorry, he has to do so with great respect and care. And he reads the scriptures in which the codes are found. He never looked himself up in the codes until Yahuwah told him to do so. And he was told to look up Code Searcher, not his name. Code Searcher believes that all people who belong to the Book of Life are encoded in Yahuwah's word. So if you belong to Yahuwah, you're there. How well do you know Yahuwah? Because you think you're ready to look to go looking into his covered place. What he is encoded there. What he has covered up to see what he has recorded about you. You belong to him. Do you call him by his name? Will he consider your searching a trespass of what belongs to him? What questions would you want to ask of Yahuwah about yourself? Unless you have studied out who is Yahuwah and what he... Let's see why I wrote this. Who is Yahuwah and what covenant he made with our ancestors and with us? You may not be given understanding of what could be found. So even if Code Searcher or yourself, if you were to find something, you might not understand it if you don't know what the um, everlasting covenant is. We would not understand them unless we understand who we are from the everlasting covenant that our ancestors made with regard to us. They committed us to keep the everlasting covenant. We have to know what it is and what our ancestors committed us to in order to fully understand what Yahuwah's word says about us. And we cannot go searching for our futures. That's not what the codes are for. We already know our living past, but we don't know our family's past and our lineage past a certain point to which we have discovered or researched. So there's some discovering to do in order to be able to understand what we may be, what may be encoded about us. Have you studied his everlasting covenant and embraced it? Have you covenanted, covenanted with Yahuwah in his everlasting covenant? Have you done what Yahushua said? Blessed is he who hears and does, because he was teaching from the Torah. We always have to know and be in agreement with what he says in the plain text on the surface before we can look into his personally owned word for what he has recorded about us. Are you in agreement with all of his word? If you are not in agreement with his whole word, there is no reason to search your names in the codes. We have to come into agreement with his word first. In other words, there are first things first. We don't show up at a graduation um, ceremony and say, hand me my diploma. We have to do the studies first. It's also very dangerous to treat Yahuwah's word like it can just be taken as well. People who keep the Torah, the commandments of Yahuwah, have a certain personal relationship in which Yahuwah communicates with them. They have that marriage covenant kind of relationship of loyalty, very much like a marriage. They have their bank account in his treasure chest of goodies that he gives freely to those who will enter the everlasting covenant with him. It is dangerous to walk into his treasure chest of goodies or his bank and say, give me what's mine. Give me what I want. Psalm 51, say, 50 verse 1 says, And Elohim shall speak, and he shall call the earth. From Sion, or Zion, the perfection of loveliness, Elohim shall shine forth. Our Elohim comes and is not silent, 
A fire consumes before him, and it is stormy all around him. He calls to the Shamayim, or the heavens, from above and to the earth to rightly rule his people. Gather my kind ones together to me, those who have made a covenant with me. So who are the kind ones? The ones who have made a covenant with him by slaughtering. Hear, O my Elohim, and I speak, O Yasharel, and I witness against you. I am Elohim, your Elohim. Offer thanksgiving to Elohim, and pay your vows to the Most High, and call upon me in the day of distress. But to the wicked Elohim said, What right have you to recite my laws, or take my covenant in your mouth, while you hated instruction and cast my words behind you? You take part with adulterers, you let your mouth loose to evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit, speak against your brother, you slander your own mother's son. You have done this, and I kept silent. You have thought I was altogether like you. I rebuke you, and put it in order before your eyes. Understand this, please, you who forget Eloah, lest I tear you in pieces with no one to deliver. Whoever offers praise esteems me, and to him who prepares a way, I show the deliverance of Elohim. Okay. Now, by the way, um, this word, this word slaughtering here, um, we do know that right now we're not in the land. Um, we can do no slaughtering like this that they did then. Um, in terms of our covenant with Yahuwah, we do the best that we can with what we think that we can um, perform in Yahuwah's word his, for his Moedim, where he's called for animal slaughterings before. Um, we're obviously not slaughtering our our animals in a um, in the Moedim. Uh, we do the best that we can to understand, and people will come and criticize this, that, and the other. But when you are doing your best to please Yahuwah, that is the best we can do right now and go by his guiding and his word and how his word is guiding us. I would also look up this word in the Hebrew because I have a Hallelujah Scriptures English Hebrew interlinear translation. And I will look it up in a dictionary and find out, is there any more to that word? Is there any other way that I'm to understand it? Between... Um, verse 7 and 8, and where I picked up a little later on in here, he goes on to um, come against the slaughterings of those who were not his Kadosh ones. So um, I would say seek Yahuwah and study his word and do the best you can do and um, leave a lot of room for correction from Yahuwah and try to be a humble servant and try not to come against those that are doing their best as well because there's a lot of room to be uh, humble here in Yahuwah's word and try to serve him the best we can. He's after, obviously, his kind ones here that have made a covenant with him. And, um, and I think that that's going to probably be the next video I do is just to go through the verses and talk about the everlasting covenant and just kind of read right through them, the covenant that our ancestors made with Yahuwah and committed us to. We get the blessings when we keep it and we get the curses if we don't keep it. I'm sorry if this is the first time you've heard about it, but now you're responsible to actually go and look up all the everlasting covenants and see what it says. I'll be doing that soon and shortly, I do believe. Yermiyahu, which means the exaltation of Yahuwah, and it's a book we know as Jeremiah, chapter 50, and I'm going to start reading here, verse 4 and 5. In those days and at that time, declares Yahuwah, the children of Yasharel, or Israel, shall come, they and the children of Yehuda together. So this is the northern tribes of Yasharel, the ten hidden tribes, the ten lost tribes, they're also called often. And it's the house of Yehuda. It's the whole house of Jacob. In those days and at that time, the children of Yasharel shall come. They and the children of Yehuda together, weeping as they come. 
and seek Yahuwah their Elohim. They shall ask the way to Zion, their faces toward it. Come and let us join ourselves to Yahuwah in an everlasting covenant, never to be forgotten. My people have been wandering sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray, turning them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All who found them have devoured them, and their adversaries have said, We are not guilty because they have sinned against Yahuwah, the home of righteousness, and the expectation of their fathers, Yahuwah. This is Melakim Bet, 2 Kings chapter 17, 37 to 41. I was cool, warm when we started, and now I've officially closed the window. And guard to do forever the laws and the right rulings and the Torah and the command which he wrote for you. And do not revere other mighty ones. And do not forget the covenant that I made with you, with your ancestors before you. And do not revere other mighty ones. He says this twice, and do not revere other mighty ones. Is the name that comes out of your mouth, Yahuwah, is this the one that is your Elohim, your mighty one? He says, do not revere other mighty ones. He said it twice. And revere Yahuwah, your Elohim, so that he delivers you from the hand of all your enemies. But they did not obey and did according to their former ruling. So these nations were revering Yahuwah and served their carved images, both their children and their children's children, as their fathers did, they are doing to this day. They were mixing the false worship of idols with the reverence of Yahuwah. Sometimes when people come into Yahuwah and they have lived their lives as Christians, they will have lots of trinkets in their house, which will have Lord and God and Jesus on them. And um, But they will, they will, in their hearts, know that Yahuwah is Elohim. But their eyes have not seen the little things that they put up in their house that still have these pagan names on them. And if you don't understand that those are pagan names, you can go back and check my last video, which was like last week. And it was about the restoration of the name of our Creator. This post speaks of the everlasting covenant that our forefathers swore to us. Okay, so this... These verses here was a, was a post that a sister had, in you who had shared. And it speaks of the everlasting covenant that our forefathers swore us to keep unto Yahuwah. Yahuwah laid out the blessings we would receive if we and our ancestors kept it, and the curses we would receive if we and our, and they did not keep it. Then they would not keep it but learn the ways of pagan worship. So after, after a generation or two, um, the generations would start to fall away and it would seem that they did not teach their children. And so the next generation would rise up and they would fall into idol idolatry. And we have our own version of that today, for sure. They would not keep it, but learn the ways of pagan worship from the peoples which, which they mixed. And, on, and nowadays with the internet, our kids can find anything to follow it. So we want to be praying hard for our children and understand that they need their prodigal time just like we did but pray that they come back um, there is another slide that I use often um, a friend of mine had a grandchild I believe that um, was almost let's see I believe the child had to have surgery and the anesthesiologist gave the child too much anesthesia medicine and um, or pain medicine, something of that. And the child almost died and was taken back to the hospital. And uh, they were they just they just sat vigil with this child until the medication had subsided and did what they could to sort of. Um, water it down in the child and, and try to get it out. Eventually, um, the child came back and was fine. An amazing uh, recovery with what looked like it was about to kill the child. And I asked this friend of mine, I said, has you who was named and put on the child? And I also asked um, a listener last night from the Netherlands, who is, I think it's the Netherlands, 
who is um, who has a, her mother living with her, and I asked her if Yahuwah's name has been put on the mother. This is in Numbers six twenty four to twenty seven, where Yahuwah has told um, the priest, and we are Yahuwah's priest today. If we're if we're sharing Yahuwah, we're proclaiming His name. Um, he wanted a kingdom of priests, and those who are doing that are are quickly becoming his priests. I'm sure that will get flack right there, but um, really that is in essence what we're doing. We're sharing, we're, we are ministering to the people of Yahuwah. So um, take, the, take the complaints to Yahuwah because it's what he's doing in the world today. Um, lots of people come against and say, uh, these people don't have any authority to minister or to teach. Um, I'm already saying I share because um, a brother has a problem with a sister teaching, so I'm sharing what Yahuwah has on my heart, and so take it up with Yahuwah, that's what he's put on my heart, that's what I'm sharing, and I believe, I believe Yahuwah is using many, many, many people in this last day to bring in um, his remnant um, from every walk, he said he will use children, he said he will use women, take it up with him. This says, I did not come to abolish the Torah, but to show you how to live it. These are the more critical things to be examining than what do the codes say about you. You need to have the big picture. Do you have the big picture? Since the end of the 2730 year curse that Code Searcher talked about in his recording two nights ago, Yahuwah has been pouring forth his ministry of restoration to us. This picture says, Yahuwah, they shall know my name. Here's the scripture. You can look it up. Make sure you have a restored name. Scriptures like Hallelujah scriptures. Let's see. There's the Sefer. Um, all these things the enemy is trying to hit so hard. There is the Institute for Scripture Research out of South Africa. It's called ISR 1998. There is a restored name, King James scriptures, that you can get online for free. Um, we're without excuse. Yahoo is restoring his name. Will you receive it? Yahushua, we just went over that. Yahuwah is restoring his son's name. Will you receive it? Encoded in this note by Rabbi Kaduri to be read one year after his death, which was 128, 2006, is the name Yahushua. It's not Jesus. It's not Yeshua. It's not Yahusha. It's not Yahshua. It would seem that Yahuwah wants us to call, to cry out Yahushua. Here is a picture for Hallelujah Scriptures, shining a light in a world of darkness. There's Yahuwah's name going out from the lighthouse. Yahuwah is returning his word in many restored name translations, not the King Jimmy version or any other translation, uh, the translations that have removed his name and his son's name. Will you receive it? Yahuwah is restoring his commandments and his instructions, not man's. Commandments, laws, and instructions, please receive them. Let's put the calendar right here. You who is restoring his calendar, not the pagan, papal, Gregorian, mass controlling, what's in what's in elitist man's best interest, commerce interest, best interest, will you receive Yahuwah's calendar? This is what Master Yahuwah says. The gate of the inner court that faces east shall be shut on the six working days, but it shall be open on the Shabbat day and also open on the day of the new moon. So it cannot be shut on six working days and also be open on Shabbat and new moon. So what day is new moon? It's a third kind of day. It's up here. This is new moon day. It's open. Okay. It's closed these six days. It's open on the Shabbat. It's closed these six working days. It's open on the Shabbat. It's closed these six working days. It's open on the Shabbat. It's closed these six working days. It's open on the Shabbat. New moon days, it's open. It's open all the Shabbats. In uh, the days that the Hebrews came out of Egypt, the, the freed slaves, they were showed by Yahuwah. And three months in a row, they had Shabbat on the 15th day of the month. Okay, so... Um, you can find out the most information, the most accurate information that I am aware of from www.creationcalendar.com. The man who runs that site is Troy Miller. 
People that are against uh, looking at this calendar will usually say things like, I've already researched it and I disproved it. It's bunk. I debunked it. Well, no, you didn't. You, just, you who just didn't give you eyes to see it or you didn't even try. Um, it's very clear. And again, the curse lifted 2009, 2010. So since that time, Yahuwah has been restoring these things to us. If you will seek it out and you really want the truth and you're willing to walk away from all of the traditions and um, the wide path and find the narrow path, you can see this. And if you don't see it, ask Yahuwah to show it to you. He has to open it up to you. Um, it's clear, but people just don't want to see it. Children can see it. They can follow it. Did you know? Sorry. And one more thing I will share with you. I, I've been studying this and keeping this calendar for five to seven years. Um, I originally left the church that kept Sundays, and I did what the Jews did, and I kept Friday night to Saturday night. And then when I saw this, um, I got it. I didn't have a huge uh, Saturday following that would be a problem for me to leave. So I didn't have a problem getting it. And Yahuwah was just so gracious to show it to me. And he has also shown me that, um, I will show you, I'll explain to you real quick how New Moon works. But the man who has the most anointing that I know to teach this is Troy Miller at www.creationcalendar.com. And also, when I first came out of the church and Yahuwah started teaching me, um, he showed me, what was I going to say? I just lost the thought. Let's see. Let me read this real quick. Yahuwah is restoring his calendar, not the pagan papal Gregorian mass controlling what's in elitist man's best interest. Will you receive it? Okay. Um, he, he showed me to look up 15 and 15th in my Strong's Concordance. Look it up. As I was learning about this calendar, he said, look up those days, and so I did. And that's how he showed me. I mean, that's just such a random thing. This idea pops into your head. Go search out 15 and 15th and see what the scripture says. As I'm learning, there's also on his site, um, there's there's many questions. Every question that can come up, every kind of, uh, I want to say offense, every kind of uh, thing that somebody can claim against it, like, oh, there's too many days in the new moon, and the new moon days aren't counted, and the days move around from month to month to month. They don't move around on Yahuwah's calendar. They're always day one, new moon day, day eight, day 15, day 22, day 29. This month, um, we're right here. I know where we're at. Okay, I'm I'm like learn. I'm learning this calendar so much better than the other calendar that I learned my whole life because um, we live off grid. We are pretty much out of the system, uh, as close to be as we can be. We we pull out of the system. We just want Yahuwah's world. Um, when I studied. The Aramaic English New Testament, Hebrews chapter 11, what's called the faith chapter. Um, the word there is Yemenutha. And when I looked at all of the examples in the Aramaic English, these people wanted out of this system. These people that were, were known for their belief and the, the kind of belief they had in Yahuwah. They were willing to chuck it all and just walk out and walk out and walk out. They just wanted Yahuwah. They were looking for the city whose builder is Yahuwah. And so they were totally okay with a different calendar than the one we all grew up with. It is not Yahuwah's calendar, the one that makes man the best amount of money, the elitist, and makes you the best amount of slave. New Moon Day is one day in this picture. New Moon Day can be two days. It's kind of like waiting for a baby to be born. A family's all excited. They're waiting for the baby to be born. Somebody's niece or somebody's sister is having a baby, and every, the family's waiting around. They're so excited waiting for the baby to be born, and all of a sudden they get the phone call. The baby's been born. The baby's been born. That's how it is with the new moon. It's a dark time. Right in here, somewhere right in here, we lose the light on the moon, and um, it takes... A, it. Either the very next day, which would be like right here or right here. The very next day, 
is new moon or it'll take two days it only takes one or two days and this is how you know you start here's our Shabbat our last Shabbat this is going to be our um, let's see I said we we're right here but I think I'm a day off here's our this is where we are we're lining up with um, Sunday and then there'll be Monday and then there'll, there'll be Tuesday our Shabbat this month has been Tuesday okay when you move to this calendar I'm giving you guys just a real quick I look at this calendar okay I know this is super new for like probably a gazillion most of you okay when when you come to uh, your new moon you will see a crescent at the end of new moon day it'll be black up until the dark time because you can't see the moon in the daytime anyway and it'll be the slightest sliver it'll be real slight um, if it's a two day new moon so this will be like a day 30 so you'll be waiting this whole time your Shabbat would have been here okay under this this say this is um, Thursday right on a Gregorian calendar your this will be your day 29 your Shabbat and then you're gonna start this next morning keeping new moon day if you don't see a sliver there that becomes day 30 and you're gonna keep new moon a whole nother day and you will see a sliver there at the end of that day and that day becomes day one now if it's just a one day new moon this would be like your this would be like your 29 day would have happened here your Shabbat you wake up the next morning you start keeping new moon at the end of the day there will be a crescent when you see the crescent it, you know it's just a one day new moon and it was your day one okay so right now we're here this is Sunday it's Sunday night on the day that I'm recording this okay Sunday on the pagan calendar that is not Sunday on Yuhuan's calendar he did not run Sunday to Saturday okay um, I'm telling you where Sunday would appear on um, on this calendar this right here is Yuhuan's calendar this is what it looks like every month you have a new moon day number one and then you have six working days and then you have eight that's the Shabbat it could line up with any day on the on the pagan papal Gregorian um, man-made commerce calendar okay but on Yahuwah's calendar they all look like this every month the only difference between this one and a 30 day month 30 day month is that the 30 would be right down here okay and then day one would pop up right here never mind 30 is going to be right here okay you're always going to be able to look at it this way because you're used to Saturdays showing up in like the Saturday spot so that's the way, way the calendar looks like this it, it can look a few different ways but this is basically what it's showing when your Shabbat is this has nothing here to do with Saturday um, on the pagan calendar this is always 8 15 22 29 okay you're always going to see the crescent at the end of day one if you don't see it on the first day of new moon then that just is counted as day 30 of the last month and then you have day one and there will be a crescent at the end of the of the day and you know that's day one and let's say this month it lined up with Tuesday next month we believe and we have pretty strong evidence today with the US Navy um, moon illuminations of the moon and stuff we have pretty strong evidence today that um, Wednesday will be our new moon day so that means our 29 would be like right right in here it, on this particular calendar the way it lays down 29 is always going to be right here okay um, day one is going to be on Wednesday it's also a solar eclipse and it's the it's the beginning of the year it's the first day of the year okay so I'm gonna hopefully I haven't confused you too much the anything that you if you give a child a new toy and it's confusing for them at first that means in a month they're going to probably really enjoy it okay for the rest of the year um, but if you give them something and it's too easy then they're going to get bored with it in three days and, and that's it they're not going to play with it all year okay so this is something for you to start thinking about and observing and and as you who will lead you make your way over to creationcalendar.com worldslastchance.com this is the, th the thought that I had that I missed for a minute and then it came back pretty quick um, world's last chance when I first came out of the church I saw world's last chance ministry videos and I thought they were really good and I thought boy if only they knew Yahuwah's calendar so I had already moved into the lunar Shabbat by then and lo and behold they did the research they repented of being on the wrong calendar and they are now keeping a lunar Shabbat I believe they have a different understanding of when what day is new moon I'm telling you what Yahuwah has shown me 
Um, and you're welcome to fuss over it and um, adjust it as you feel led. But after five years, this is this is where we are. And this is why a lot of people, if you if you have any friends on a lunar Shabbat calendar, they may be keeping it over two or three different days because they have a different understanding. You, who is going to fix all that? They are far, far beyond Saturday and Sunday keeping people. Okay, they deserve a great amount of respect because they have come out, they've done the homework, and their eyes were open and their heart was open to let Yahuwah correct them. Yahuwah is restoring his calendar and his Shabbat. Moreover, also I gave them my Shabbats to be an oat, a sign, an oath. Yahuwah, between me and them. So I would believe this verse says, Moreover, also I gave them my Shabbats to be an oat, or an oath between me and them. And that is in Ezekiel or Yekezkel. 20 verse 12 so he is restoring his shabbat will you receive it we just spent quite a bit of time talking about that yahuwah's moedim these are his appointments they're found in leviticus 23 yahuwah is restoring his other festivals besides shabbat shabbat is also listed there in leviticus 23 his celebrations appointments and no more will he allow us to keep christmas easter halloween valentine's and any other pagan holiday Will you receive them? Will you walk away from your Christmas? Will you walk away from your Easter? We keep Passover. We keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's what he's calling us to do. Yahuwah is restoring the 12 tribes of Yasharel to be his people since the curse time of 2,730 years has ended. Will you be restored as the 12 restored tribes of Yasharel, also known as Yisrael or Israel? Yahuwah is restoring the land to his people. They will each receive land as part of their inheritance. Will you return to the land with his people, and will you receive your land? Most people think that this year is the Jubilee year. We believe it is starting in like three days. Um, on the on, I'm not sure if I'm counting the days right, because I'm just telling you when it is, at March 9th. We believe that's when the year is starting, and that's when the Jubilee year is starting. We may be wrong, and if, if so, Yahuwah will correct us. We will humbly just step in with the guidance he's giving us. Some of the guidance we get is um, is in Scripture. A lot of it is uh, what he starts to show us. He says, notice the signs in the heavens. He told us to notice the signs of the heavens. So no, we can't find a verse that's going to tell you March 9th is the beginning of the year. But he told us to observe the signs in the heavens. And then we have to be right with him for him to give us, to clue us in as to what these signs are. Yahuwah is returning a pure language to his people. Will you receive it? We've seen people. This verse says, For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of Yahuwah to serve him with one consent or with one shoulder. We see people that say, well, I don't want to learn Hebrew. I don't have to learn Hebrew. I don't know Hebrew. I can't do this. I can't do that. I won't do this. Um, if you start calling Yahuwah's name, he, he may start showing you some things and he may start increasing your skills level. Don't put him in a box. Don't limit him. Ask him how high, how high can I jump? How, how much can I serve you? Um, we just love him so much. There's nothing we can do but serve him. Saying no to any of these things may mean forfeiting your blessing to all of them. All of those things I just shared with all those pictures those are the things Yahuwah is restoring now to his 10 northern tribes and to all the tribes, all the tribes. Um, are you going to come out of the pagan deities? Are you going to come out of Christmas? Are you going to come out of Easter? Saying no to any of these things may mean forfeiting your blessing to all of them. Um, even if Code Searcher or you look up your own blessings, um, they're, they're not necessarily for sure going to happen. They might be, these are the things I was going to give them if they had decided to serve me with their whole heart, with their very. Scripture says a word that um, in in Deuteronomy, which the book is really called Deborim, the words matters, things, and to arrange even. Um, he says to serve me with your very. We all got a very. Everything we've got, it's so very, very. Uh, Micaiah, her son, says, very baby, um, when he's talking to one of the animals. 
Love him with your very. So when he starts bringing your attention up on any of these items, go, move with it, walk toward him, put your tent next to his, as Alan Horvath would say. I suggest you study very seriously. These are very serious issues with Yahuwah, and they should certainly be examined and understood. The everlasting covenant of Yahuwah should certainly be something you should be examining and entering into with Yahuwah. We can't just ask everybody else to do the studying for us. And I'm so thankful you who has given us people that have studied. And we're compelling you. We're trying our best to compel you to come along, be ready to um, come back to Yahuwah as the 10 northern tribes, as all the tribes uh, being joined with, with um, Yehuda. And that we would all come together. And we need to, we need to not be um, uh, trying to like lord over anybody that they've done something wrong or they've they've they haven't made us happy with the way we are doing this that and the other way the way we understand um Yahuwah's word to work um these things are distractions and they're they're trying they're attempting to keep us from reaching the people Yahuwah wants to be reached um and that's sad and it's really kind of sick but they don't know it. I think most of them don't know it. That it's subconscious. But um, our enemy works in in those that aren't that are ignorant, that um, aren't really turned on to the things of Yahuwah, and so he's working in them. One last thing, I want you to go and watch this video. Well, he knows my heart is the name. It's by Suzuki Tanaka. It is a very well done video that every modern person who thinks they serve the Creator should watch deeply. It is less than 12 minutes long, but should cause you some deep well digging of clarity. You who showed me today in Hebrew, um, the word for well and pit is also the word for like, oh wait, it's right here. Let me just grab it so I make sure I tell you the right thing. I want to get it right. Okay, this, by the way, we got the right side for you. This is the dictionary that Eric has compelled a lot of people that study Hebrew um, to get. And I have two, I have three hard copies and one on, on a flash drive. And I use it so much. I use it so much. And I'm just going to, you, you learn the modern letters like this page I'm on, if I get it in front of the camera right. This is the letter hey, okay? And it's it's laid out just like a I can't run the camera backwards. It's laid out just like a dictionary. You just learn where the letters are and in the right order and you can look up the words. It's pretty simple. But I'm just going to look up this um this bet olive fresh. I was sharing it with code searcher earlier because I was pretty impressed with it and you just brought it back to my attention all day long. Bet, second letter, and then Olive would be like looking up B A in a dictionary, and then and then Rash, you gotta get over to the B A R. There it is. Okay, so Bet Olive Rash is well and pit, and then the second word for Bet Olive Rash, the same spelling, just a different pronunciation, is to explain, make clear. He explained, made clear. Okay. Find out where I was here. Okay, so you want to watch this video. It's 12 minutes long. It should cause you some deep well digging of clarity, making clear, explaining um, the depth of uh, some of the depth of serving Yahuwah is what this video is really about. Um, and, and it's, I'm just going to leave it at that and have you guys go watch it. I think, uh, I think you who will use it mightily to speak, um, into your life. Have you entered into the everlasting covenant of Yahuwah? Before having someone search into Yahuwah's word for you to find out if you're encoded there, make sure you have dug well, dug your well deep enough to understand all that you can before you seek to look into what Yahuwah has covered and sealed from the masses eyes. He has people appointed to do this, to look, and then he guides, he guides Code Searcher where to look and what to look for. 
and he impresses upon him. Are you kadosh, sanctified before Yahuwah? Is it not for just a nut anyone and anything goes? It is for the kadosh righteous ones. Lastly, I wish to bring up that this is not about you and about receiving honor. This is about seeking first the kingdom of Yahuwah, and all these things shall be added unto you. We are to humble ourselves in the sight of Yahuwah, and he will lift us up. He will lift you. He will speak to you when you are seeking to please him and to live for him. He will speak to you so you precisely, so precisely that you do not have to search for yourself in codes. We look in the codes as Yahuwah leads, and we are looking for what is in the best interest for all of Yahuwah's people all at once. Our focus is on Yahuwah Tzabaot of hosts and his people and the events of revelation and what the people will endure. That's why we're not looking up Madonna to see what she's doing or what it says about her. We just don't care. We consider greatly the people of the ten hidden tribes who do not even know who they are yet. We are trying to reach them, and these are the terms with which Yahuwah seems to keep before our minds and our hearts and our eyes. It takes just as much time to search for the whole house of Yasharel, all twelve tribes, as it does for one person interested in their own outcome, if they could even understand it. And this is about your level of belief. Will Yahuwah be good to you? Will he save you? Will he meet all your needs? Will he fulfill his promise to you? You can trust him as long as you know and have committed to the everlasting covenant, as long as you are being his bride and serving his kingdom. We love you. We have a heart to see every one of you who is lost sheep restored to his kingdom. We are here to help. Contact us and we will share what, what you need to know to the level of guidance you who has given to us. In our personal lives, we are pursuing obedience to Yahuwah's Torah, which means instruction, and to his commandments and all his right rulings. We feel that time is short and that soon will be the time of distress for the Gentiles, those not keeping the everlasting covenant. Jeremiah 16, 19 to 21 um, tells us there will be a day of distress for the, for the Gentiles. And it says that they will come to him and say, Surely our forefathers inherited only falsehood and vanity in which there is no assent. And he says, Shall a man make Elohim which are not Elohim? And he says, This time I will know, I will cause them to know my hand, and I will cause them to know my might, and they will know that I am Yahuwah. We are observing Yahuwah's Shabbat and Yahuwah's Moedim, his appointments with us. You can find those in the Leviticus 23. And we're here to help. And I wanted to show with you um, three verses in Revelation, or the book is called Kazon, which means vision or open visions in Revelation. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And this is after, this is immediately after um, the woman has been taken into the wilderness for three and a half years to be kept there and fed there by Yahuwah in the place he's, he has created to keep her. But the, dra the dragon is sent a, um, a flood right here and the earth opens its mouth to help the woman and swallows up the river which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth it says here as you can see and the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to fight with the remnant of her seed those guarding the commands of Yahuwah and possessing the witness of Yahushua Hamashiach um, earlier in the book in, in chapter 7 and in 9 it talks about those who were sealed with the name of Yahuwah on their forehead and I believe that these are the people there. We see that they are guarding the commands and they possess the witness of Yehushua Hamashiach. So I believe that um, these are also the ones that are protected from um, the, the creatures that can create scorpion-like bites. They're protected. Yehushua says you can't touch them. And Yehushua also talks in the, in the Tanakh, which you know, is the Old Testament about sealing up his people that are concerned about the things that he's concerned about. So we need to know what is our Elohim concerned about? What's important to him? We need to know how do we please him? This is uh, Kazon or Revelation 14, 12. Here is the endurance of the Kodashim, the um, sanctified ones. Here are those guarding the commands of Yahuwah and the belief of Yahushua. So they have endurance, and they're guarding the commands, and they have the belief of Yahushua. 
Revelation 22, 14, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. And that is all I have for you guys. Um, it's we're, um, we're an hour and just at 20 minutes. I thank you for your time. I thank you for allowing us to serve you and share the word of Yahuwah and share Yahuwah with you and all the things that he had seems to be doing since the end of the curse. Um, 2009, 2010, I, um, I want to encourage you to be strong and bold in uh, restoring the things of Yahuwah to your life and within your own family. You only have Yahuwah to answer to, not to man. And um, just get a restored name scriptures. There's even free ones online. Um, and start reading that. Start putting it before your face. Start making it comfortable for you. The Hebrew will become comfortable to you and um, his word, his name will become comfortable for you and his calendar will become comfortable for you as you start to walk in it. That's why Yahushua says, you know, hear it and do it. Hear it and do it. And um, if you will send me a friend request and if we're already friends on Facebook and ask me to give you friends that are already walking in these things, I will give them to you and they will help hold you up and be bold with you. Um, they will help you to make the changes in your life so that we start um, pleasing our Creator. And our Creator is going to be um, giving us visions and restoring His Word to us. And, and those visions, by the way, and dreams and things, they need to line up with Yahuwah's Word. So we need to be studying. He tells us to study to show ourselves approved. Times are getting tough and they are going to get tougher and they're going to be speeding up. So um, I just ask you to seek Yahuwah and seek for discernment and wisdom and for truth. And um, we just thank you for allowing us to serve you. And we are doing our best. So please forgive us for any shortcomings and try to look past in any way that you, if anybody gets offended, you need to check that offense and find out if that offense is trying to keep you from receiving the things Yahuwah wants you to receive because your enemy will come after you and try to steal this word right away from you. He will. Expect him. He's coming. And uh, you need to work through that, work past it, study through it. Um, seek counsel from those who do follow Yahuwah and are walking in the, in the matters he is restoring. We love you guys, and um, we thank you for remembering our ministry. It is a full-time ministry for us, and we are, we're working 12 to 14 hours around the clock here um, in the things of Yahuwah as best we can around the things we have to work on the farm as well. Please, um, please pray for the things Yahuwah wants to restore in your life and, um, and in your family. Who is going to use you mightily, and the enemy does not want any of these things restored. Um, but I tell you here, he is restoring all of these things, and I don't want you to miss any of the barakot, any of the blessings he has for you. I think I'm going to be reading through the verses of the Everlasting Covenant with you on my next recording, um, and it shouldn't take me too long to put that together. Um, I'll just mostly, I'll, I'll try to put it in a, in a form so you guys can read along and see it. It's so important to put things in front of your eyes so you can start to learn. Um, and when we learn things, we learn like preschoolers and one-year-olds and, um, we learn with colors and sounds and, um, that is a, a, one of the ways that I learned Paleo Hebrew with Eric Bissell was he had colors and, um, I still use the colors when I write the Hebrew words often, and, and I'm working with the Atbash now uh, to the level that who is allowing me to move forward with it, which is a way that the Hebrews uh, encoded some of the words. Um, so uh, I wish you guys a, a great evening, and Yahuwah, Leila Tob is how we say good evening and good night, and um, may Yahuwah impress upon you the truth of all that I've said and bring um, his word as a witness to the things that I've said as you study and look for and confirm the things I've said. It is your responsibility to do it. When you hear truth, it's your responsibility to research it and then 
to walk in it when you have confirmed that it is true. And therefore, Yahuwah is going to have true witnesses and not mixed messages. Um, we need to walk in truth and in boldness and ask him for the boldness if you're missing it. Uh, Yahuwah Barak you and make his face shine upon you. And I'm going to share that blessing from uh, number six. I don't have a scripture. I'm going to see if I have one real quick, quick close to me. I've been studying and they've been scattered everywhere. Um, I think I have a whole of you scriptures. Let me just grab one real quick so I can read that blessing to you guys real quick. I don't have it memorized. I have other things memorized, but I don't have that one memorized yet. Okay, I'm coming back. I found it. Um, this is our Hallelujah Scriptures Big Print Edition. And I'll just show you, you know, like, Big Print here. It's hard for me to work backwards like in a mirror here. Okay. In number six, there is a blessing, and I'm going to read it to you. And I recommend that when you start walking in these truths and you start believing that Yahuwah's name is Yahuwah, and I put pl pl uh, plenty of proof in the last video I did. When you start realizing that's his name and he is not happy about all these other things, that his name was stolen out of his word and replaced with Lord, which uh, Adonai is translated to Lord and also um, Baal, which is the name of another deity. And Yahuwah says we're not supposed to even speak the name of those deities out of our lips. I mean, it's bad, bad news. Um, number six. And so this is what Yahuwah spoke to Moshe and said, Speak to Aharon, Aaron, and his son, saying, This is how you barak the children of Yisrael, or Yasharel. Say to them, Yahuwah barak you and guard you. You who will make his face shine upon you and show favor to you. You who will lift up his face upon you and give you peace. Thus they shall put my name on the children of Yasharel, and I myself shall barak them. You want to have Yahuwah's name in your heart? You want to kick out the other demons? The other the other deities, rather? Um, you want to have Yahuwah's name on your children. If your children are older and they're out of the home and maybe you've, you've dedicated them um, to Jesus when they were younger, tell Yahuwah that you didn't know his son's name was Yahushua. You didn't know, and now you're going to walk in his son's name, Yahushua. And you didn't know his name was not the Lord. Or you thought it was Adonai or... Um, you know, when he uses Adon or Adonai in his word in Hebrew, he usually follows that by his name. Adon Yahuwah or Adonai Yahuwah. He doesn't just throw that in there as, as a, a take away, take away my name, take away. He doesn't do that. His name is so important to you, to him. And it should be important to you. I, I try to challenge people, um, as, as I do, that you can sit with the Strong's Concordance and a restored name scriptures like, you know, the Hallelujah scriptures. And you can look up the word name in the scriptures and then, and then it'll show you all the script, all the addresses where name, the word, the word name comes up and look for everyone where it says my name this and my name that. And, and then go look up every one of those scriptures and see how he, what he says about his name, how he feels about his name. His name, his word says he puts his, his name above all. He puts his name above all. His name is the key to all those other restorations. If you, if you can't see his calendar, but you're still calling on Gimel Dalit, he's not bound to give you his calendar. He doesn't throw it before swine. If you're still what is one of the other things? If you're still keeping Christmas, I'm trying I'm trying to pick the one because until you start to learn about his everlasting Torah, um, you know, you're not gonna pull out of Easter and Christmas and stuff like that until you learn. He has his own feast, he expects us to keep. His own feast. But 
until you start doing his things, he doesn't know you're his servant. He knows, he knows you're his servant in the sense that he made sure that even under the curse, you were getting some of the right training or you were put in a place where you had access to the right training. But then now we have to, we now have to move into what he's given us. We have to be responsible to research and find out, am I telling you the truth or am I not? And if I am telling you the truth, you need to walk in it. You need to say, uh, thank you, I'll take that. Uh, that's for me. I want those blessings. I want the blessings, not the curses. I now heard, oh, by the way, I heard that my ancestors uh, signed me up for something without my knowledge, but now I've heard about it. Now I have to go and read about the everlasting covenant. And then when I read it and I find out it is true, I confirm in his word that his, everla his everlasting covenant is in fact everlasting, then I need to say, I will hear it and I will do it. I will hear it and I will do it. Because those are the people that are Yahuwah's. Those that hear and do, and they've they've separated themselves from the ways of the world and the things of the flesh, and they are seeking you with their whole heart. They're compelled to. They can't do anything else. So anyway, um, I've kept you guys long enough now. I've talked another 10 minutes about things that are important. And we love you guys, and we thank you uh, for the opportunity to serve you. We thank you for remembering our ministry. And um, we'll see you on the next one. Shalom.